Donnie Wonder, Callaway Golf. I'm here with Callaway staffer Maverick McNeely. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, interesting things in your bag. So there's kind of three hot ticket items I want to discuss here. Let's talk, start with a driver. Um, obviously lofted up, 12 degrees at 11. So talk to me a little bit about the decision to get into a higher lofted head and, and how that works for you. Well, this was the easiest driver fitting I've ever done. I remember at Amex, I was on the range, had never seen or hit the driver before, and four swings later had it perfectly dialed in. And I'm a pretty picky player, that never happens. And went to the ECPC and had two more backup heads made with a total of three more driver swings, which it's for me, it's just the easiest driver to <laughs> dial in. Um, it's kind of a draw biased head. I love putting weight on the toe and um, anything that helps me get the ball up in the air is great. Lofted down to 11 is perfect. Um, as far as your driver is concerned, are you looking to like, are you looking to stay in a spin window with your driver, a flight window that works for you? Like, how does that work? Yeah, I'm usually in the ballpark at 24, 2500 spin. Okay. Um, this one, I, I love the adjustability that I can change the loft and lie independently. That's really, really helpful for me. But for me, what really sold me on this driver were the off-center hits, particularly the toe misses. Uh, they just, they stayed out to the right. They didn't hook left like I'm, I'm used to seeing on, on toe misses on other drivers. So uh, the off-center hits on this one were way better. Okay, now we're gonna get to the, the most popular topic of the day here, which is these beautiful Callaway prototype irons. Uh, we're calling them the Top Gun Protos. Uh, very fitting for your name. Talk to me about the irons, just the why of it. Like, why are these here? So it was a lot of fun with the R&D team taking a deep dive into these irons. I grew up playing Nike irons in college, and um, a lot of those feels have stayed in my golf game. The tool trains the player. So a lot of the things I've felt with the irons that shaped my golf game are, are things that we've kind of built into these. And we've actually learned a lot of lessons about the constructions of irons that uh, have you know, shown up in different parts of Callaway clubs too. Like you can notice the weight plates in the back of these irons. I've never liked hosel plugs. When you try and match the swing weights by putting weight in the right. hosel of the club, for me, it feels like the club shuts down too early and I start it left. So we started all these replaceable weights in the back of all the new irons, which lets us change the swing weight while maintaining the same center of gravity. And uh, another thing we did was lengthen the blade a little bit. Same thing, moving that CG a little further away from the hosel slows down the closure rate and gives me more face awareness. I have a question. How, how much did you nerd out when you're building like your own custom one-on-one -on -one set of irons? Like, just talk to me. What was that like? It, it's really fun. Um, <laughs> you know, I I'm I am a nerd. Went to Stanford, engineer, okay. and all that. But at the end of the day, it comes down to feel. And okay. if it doesn't feel right, it really bothers me. And um, you know, I could feel a two gram hosel plug right. uh, and to me I feel that face shutting down so we really have to get these exactly right all the different you know bits of curvature and radius on all the different parts of the iron you know when we're, we're putting these in CAD there's a radius on the sole a radius on the toe and then a different radius to on the corner to make these match up uh, we gotta get this par area the same there's so many different elements to making an iron look and feel the way you want it to I had no idea any of that existed. It's a rabbit hole. Yeah, it <laughs> it's really is. a severe is. rabbit hole. Uh, last thing about your irons, I see there's a little bit of leading edge relief here. Um, is that just obviously turf interaction, but is that is that something you've always kind of preferred? Uh, it is. So I, I like a very straight leading edge. Okay. I like my irons to look boxy, straight leading edge, straight top line, even a, a, an angular toe, that top corner. Right. And uh, when, what we did with these irons is we did build in a little extra leading edge on the front, a little more curvature, a little more onset so that if anyone does want to take the leading edge off and straighten it, you can a little room without, there. without adding too much offset. Gotcha. So that was great. Um, lastly, I want to talk about the wedges. So you have 52, 56, 60, or 52, 56, 58. Talk to me about the loft gapping in this because obviously there's probably some moving around in the lofts here in the 58 yeah. maybe. Yeah, so all my clubs are four degrees apart. Okay. Lob wedge is 59, sand wedge 55, gap wedge is 51 okay. all, all the way until my four iron which is a three yard gap between the four and five four irons at 24 but uh, i have two gap wedges i've got the 52 degree bent to 51 but also have this a wedge and this a wedge is built to the same construction as my pitching wedge has an x100 shaft as opposed to the s4s in my wedges right um, but i did that and i've been playing with the last couple of weeks because i hit way more full shots with the gap wedge than i do chipping around the green I mostly chip with uh, lob wedge and sand wedge around the green. Okay. Uh, so that, that's been helpful. Well, thanks a lot. I mean, obviously for all the gearheads, this is, uh, this is kind of their dream, but thanks for all the insight into the irons. It's really interesting stuff, but uh, good luck this week and uh, we'll see you around. Good, thanks.